Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I did a thing. Uh, I'm so happy with how it turned out. I've not been able to stop running my hands like through my hair. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, but I am like ecstatic with it. I'm so happy with how this turned out. It just looks oh. <laughs> so good. Uh, but for those of you who are new here, my name is Bethany Vigen and I do a episode every Tuesday called Toxic Tuesdays where I discuss a plant that you may find in your backyard that is toxic to you. Um, so for those of you who are interested in following along, don't forget to like and subscribe. And today's episode is on Brugmansia. So Brugmansia is more commonly known as Angel's Trumpet and it is part of the Solanaceae family which is the same as Atropa belladonna which is what we did last week. Brugmansia is a woody tree that can grow anywhere between 3 to 11 meters high which is about 10 to 36 feet with large leaves that are covered by fine hairs. So the leaves are alternatively arranged along the stem and can grow from 10 to 30 centimetres long, which is 4 to 12 inches, and can have a width of 4 to 18 centimetres, which is 2 to 7 inches. The flowers of this plant are pendulous, which means that they hang loosely and they're large and fragrant. Now the name Angel's Trumpet actually comes from the shape of the flower because they are shaped like a trumpet. They range in size from 14 centimetres to 50 centimetres long and can have an opening of anywhere between 10 to 35 centimetres. They do come in a variety of colours including pink, yellow, green, orange, red or white. Brugmansia is native to the tropical regions of South America. So from along the Andes from Venezuela all the way through to northern Chile. It is also found in the southeast regions of Brazil. It has become naturalized in other tropical regions including Australia, Asia, Africa and North America. This is due to Brugmansia being a very popular ornamental plant that can be grown in a pot. Now, having it in a pot does prevent it from reaching its full height. It doesn't stop it though from flowering every six to eight weeks during the seasons of summer and autumn. Brugmansia contains the same tropane alkaloids as Atropa belladonna. So that's atropine, scopolamine and hyoscyamine throughout the entirety of the plant. Ingestion of any part of this plant can lead to paralysis of smooth muscles, confusion, tachycardia, dry mouth, constipation, tremors, migraine headaches, poor coordination, delusions, visual and auditory hallucinations, midriasis, which is pupil dilation, rapid onset cycloplegia, which is paralysis of the ciliary muscle in the eye, resulting in the inability to focus on nearby objects, and death. Brugmansia was named after the Dutch physician and botanist Seabold Justinus Brugmans, who was mainly remembered for his treatment of gangrene. Like all relatives of the toxic nightshade family, Brugmansia has been used for folk medicine and divination. It has been used traditionally in South American indigenous cultures for medical preparations and as an enthogen for spiritual and religious ceremonies. Now, enthogen are psychoactive substances that induce alterations in mood, perception, or behavior for the purposes of spiritual development. Now, as Brugmansia made its way into Asia and Africa, the hallucinogenic components were still continued to be used medically to treat ailments. Brugmansia was used externally as a poultice, a tincture, and an ointment, and the leaves were actually applied directly to the skin. These concoctions were used to treat aches and pains, dermatitis, orchitis, which is inflamed testes, arthritis, rheumatism, headaches, infections, and as an anti-inflammatory. There was also internal uses, although they were highly diluted because of the toxins that were in Brugmansia. These internal concoctions were used to provide respite for stomach and muscle ailments, a decongestant, the inducement of vomiting, 
for the expulsion of worms and parasites and as a sedative. Now the hallucinations received when either smoking or ingesting Brugmansia are reportedly very unpleasant. Several South American cultures have actually used this plant for unruly children so that their ancestors in the spirit world can admonish them when they're misbehaving and thereby making them more amenable. Brugmansia though does have modern medical value though due to its alkaloids. These include spasmolytic, antiasmatic, anticholinergic, narcotic and anesthetic properties. Although these are now artificially synthesized. Now as I said before Brugmansia is a highly popular ornamental plant however because of its popularity poisonings are actually still occurring today. I found two cases of Brugmansia poisoning that I found somewhat interesting and I will happily link them uh, in the description box below for you to read if you are interested. Let me know your thoughts as well because oh boy one of these was just wow. <laughs> um, but anyway the first case was back in October of 2019 and it was in regards to a 60 year old Sinhalese woman who had presented with acute delirium, confusion and agitation. She had ingested a herbal drink that she had created from the Brugmansia leaves from the one that she had in her garden. She had urinary retention, midriasis which is a pupil dilation and sinus tachycardia. Thankfully, she was actually managed supportively with activated charcoal and hydration and after 15 hours, her delirium had actually passed. So that one had a relatively good ending, which is fantastic. The second case that I found, however, is back in 2006 and it's in regards to an 18 year old male who drank tea made from two Brugmansia flowers. The reason he had been brought into hospital was because after having his tea, he had amputated both his tongue and his male appendage. His mother and grandmother were the ones who found him and reportedly they've said that he was telling them, don't worry, don't worry, it'll be all right. Unfortunately, re-implantation of the amputated parts was not possible and when he came out of surgery, um, he had actually advised that he didn't remember anything. He had complete and utter amnesia for that entire period and could not remember a thing. So I think the moral of the story in regards to this particular plant is don't eat it, don't drink it, just leave it alone. If you want to have the beautiful gorgeous flowers in your garden, go right ahead. You want it in a pot, go right ahead. Don't ingest any of it. So that is everything today guys on Brugmansia. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and while you're there don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, if you would like to continue having this conversation you can reach out to me on Twitter and we'll go under the hashtag Toxic Tuesdays. But thank you very much for spending some of your day with me again as always. It's always appreciated. But have a lovely week and I will see you all next week on Toxic Tuesday. So stay safe and keep on learning. See you later guys.